Hello and welcome back to Robert's Rebellion. Last time we had our friend die in the north, which was of course the Tower of Joy event. I did know it at the time, but I didn't really remember it going down like that. You know, Ned getting shanked, followed by Howland Reed killing a uh, Three Kings guard. But anyway, that's how it went down in this reality. We married Cersei, and we also got most of a new Kings guard. So. What's the plan this time? Well, um, I think we're going to hold a tournament. I mean, it just seems about the right time. We've got some money to spend. We've just had a, a big war. You know, we've just got married. It seems like the time to hold a tournament would be now. So, let's do it. Let's see how this works. Also, what I find really funny is that there's a tournament system that's been added in this mod. And the next DLC for this game is literally uh, going to have a tournament system. So it's just kind of like, alright, well, this is how it is now. How it might be in like a month or two's time? Who has any idea? But anyway. Let us hold a tournament of such grandeur as to be remembered for centuries. Have the maester send ravens with an invitation for every likely warrior. Um, I think I only want to see the semi-finals in the final. I think we don't really know enough people to do everyone. As in, we're not fully immersed in the world right now. So let's do that. You want to pay homage? Who are you? Lord Perkin. Alright, that's fine. Thank you very much, uh, Perkin. I will take the renown and move on with my day. The Tourney of King's Landing. The lords and champions of the realm have arrived, ready to test their mettle in the lists. A hundred shields hang on a hundred pavilions, the heraldry of houses great and small on proud display. Any warrior with a lance and a horse may enter, but only the most skilled will advance to the later jousts. Oh, you would also like to give me uh, some money? This is Lord Eustace Brun of Dire Den. Alright, well thank you very much. Hey, your level of fame went up. We are now distinguished. A wife's touch. I spot my wife Cersei chattering excitedly to Dickon, listing ideas and suggestions for his tapestry. My weaver is barely concealing his contempt, clearly annoyed at my spouse's interference. And as you are weaving a representation of a glorious battle, she goes on, it may as well match my grandmother's old tapestry. Part of Dickon's soul seems to be dying. Well, you know what? Our wife must be heard. We're going to make our wife happy. That seems like a sensible thing to do. It's going to make it a lower quality. Well, that was to be expected. Uh, we have Lord Renfred Riker of Duskendale come to us here with 30 gold. Ooh. Um, as he stands, he stumbles awkwardly. The court gasps in unison as he falls, ending sprawled my feet, cheeks flushed with embarrassment. What a shambles. What a shambles. Hey, our court grandeur is now level 7. Okay. Get to our heir in a second, but our court grandeur is now level 7. That now means, hey, we've lost a ton of negatives here. We still have the negative 20 vassal opinion, but, like, it's getting a lot better for us. Okay. So we have a daughter. So it's suggested that we name her Corella. I don't really see a reason to name her Corella. Um, oh, right. She's also got a sibling. Apparently we already have a bastard child with Becca. Okay, cool. Um, but Corella. Uh, if we got like somebody we we can name her uh, Kasana after our mother, that seems reasonable. We could also name her something after a Lannister, but like, no. Who's gonna do that? Maybe the next child can be named after a Lannister. That's okay. Right, Kasana. I'm still waiting for a tournament. Lord Laren Hardy. Okay, you have come with no money, but still, I appreciate it. Uh, we now have Lord Alaric Strongbox. Or, or Cave. Strongbox is the name of the uh, holding. Okay, that's fine. He's also come with money. Might go to speed 5 soon. Ah, there we go. The Tourney of King's Landing. The preliminary rounds have ended, and many brave competitors are left licking their wounds and nursing their bruised pride. Those who remain in contention ready themselves for the final rounds. The tourney grounds are abuzz with anticipation as spectators lay their wagers and competitors make their boasts. Fortune favours the bold. So it hasn't told me who's in the tournament, which is interesting. Uh, this is Lord Byron Bywater. Um, 
who also fell over. So we're gonna say what a shambles. Um, but yeah, the reason why I'm interested that it didn't tell us who's in the tourney is in CK2, there was a, a mechanic where you could like bet on the jousts and all of that sort of stuff. Um, which I assume is not in this one, as we can't see the tourney, unless it's like a decision that we can look at. No, it doesn't appear to be a thing. At least not yet. Maybe it'll be a thing right before the jousts uh, happen. My entourage and I have just arrived in the Red Keep after wearying travel. There are important matters regarding the welfare of Macy's Hook that I must discuss with you. I request an audience at your court at your earliest convenience. Okay, well this seems new, I think. I don't think this is a base game thing. Petition. Dismantle faction. Lord Marek is at last shown to, into my great hall. I waste no time before walking up to my throne and bowing deeply. Thank you for seeing me, my liege. I come to you today with an urgent request. I am beset by Lord Hubbard and his Liberty faction. Please, you must put the impudent whelps in their place for the good of the realm. Okay. So this is Chance Door against Macy's Hook. Now, I can't remember whether Macy's uh, Hook joined us in the war. I think they did. I think I remember them joining. So we can say these traitors will have to answer to me. They cannot join another faction uh, for five years. They lose opinion of me and their faction is disbanded and we both gain renown. He says its own price. We're not going to blackmail them for money. My favours are best not forgotten or I will not fight your battles. Um... You know what? Let's let, let's uh, say the traitors will have to answer to me. Sure, we'll dismantle your thing. That's okay. Right. Hoster. Hey! Hoster Tully of the um, Riverlands. He didn't come with any money, but you know, it's nice to have him here. A demonstration of leadership. My master of coin, Lord Paramount Tywin, has been hovering around my council meetings lately. Knowing his interest in matters of leadership, I cannot help but feel that the man is waiting for me to impress him. I could probably engage him in conversation. On the other hand, it might be better for him to simply see me interact with my men. There is something to be said for at least pretending to know it, every soldier's face. Let's go uh, greet some recruits. I think that seems like more of our sort of thing. Yeah, we'll see what's going on there. Anything new here? No, not really. Cobbler Square the Septum. Well, Cobbler Square is usually the domain of busy craftsmen, sometimes it finds itself subject to those who fervently worship the Seven. This is due in part to the square residing east of the Gates of God, and is a result of long-standing traditions among the preachers of the faith. It's hardly uncommon to find a septum taking their turn to preach to those who listen, and today is no different. This is all wrong, do we even worship the same faith, or I don't have time for this? Um, I don't have time for this. Definitely not. Aha, the tourney. Okay, so yes, there is a way to do a bet, but it does it as you get the individual fights. So we have Master Morgan. Uh, so this is Master Morgan, just a lowborn who is currently ill. Okay. Uh, his liege is Bendar Belmore. We have Lord Donal um, of Lambs... Lord Donal Lambshold of Lambshold, who is better. Well, I think I can make some money off of this because this guy is ill. Um, and he's a lowborn. I mean, come on, we're gonna we're gonna put our money on Lord Donal. 150 gold. From my seat of high honor, I watched Lord Donal triumph over Master Morgan. The victor will advance to the next round. More significantly for me, since I had foresight to bet on Lord Donal, I will fatten my purse nicely. Uh, thank you, Lord Donal. 260 gold off of that. Ooh, okay. Who's come to see us now? We have. Lord Lucerus Valerian. Ooh, okay. So we have a High Valerian coming to see us. Hmm. Okay, well. You know, come on in. Under right set. Lord Lucerus is at last shown into my great hall and wastes no time before walking up to my throne and bowing deeply. Thank you for seeing me, my liege. I come to you today with an urgent request. The Lordship of Driftmark's Faithful are in need of a place of worship. I would be humbled if you helped fund a new sept and shroud for the faith of the seven. Hmm. Okay. Driftmark has been bereft of septon for too long. Surely you will sponsor an annex. Okay. Um. The seven who are one will bear witness to your dues. Or 
The parish generally sponsor churches themselves. Yeah, I think we're going to say no here. I think that's a fairly easy one for us. Who's next? Who, who survived? We have Jonas Bracken. Okay. Against Lord uh, Elmond. Now, this is definitely a stronger side of the tournament. Uh, I think I'm going to put my money towards Lord Jonas. Not just because he has higher prowess. I mean, actually, no, 100% because he has higher prowess. There we go. From my seat of high honour, I watch Lord Elmond triumph over Lord jo Jonas. The victor will advance the next round. May the others take Lord Elmond. He has cost me good coin. Oh no, I've lost my money. Now we have Donal versus Elmond. You know what? It, it's not a smart move, but I'm going to put my money on Donal. There we go. Oh no. Uh, Lord Elmond won again. The Tourney Champion. The grand tournament I was hosting has just come to an end. Despite not being a knight, Lord Elmond of Sunkenwood was able to claim victory over all the other assembled knights and warriors. While the prize of gold and fame is enough for some, I could not help but think that Lord Elmond of Sunkenwood's martial showing was so impressive that a further reward is warranted. Perhaps knighthood is the appropriate reward to honour such talent. You know what? Sure. Sure, I'm going to make you a knight, Lord Elmond of Sunkenwood. The final joust is contested and the stands erupt in raucous cheers at its conclusion, with Lord Elmond emerging the victor. My tourney has been a glorious affair. While Lord Elmond's name will doubtless echo in the minds of small folk and noble alike, my name too will perhaps linger in their memories. It's truly a tournament for the ages. United someone. Nice. So we now have him as a knight. So he now gets all these bonuses, which I'm sure he'll appreciate. Wonderful. Right. Who's arrived next? Lord John Faring. Okay. Come on in. You would like me to pay for your uh, sept? No. I'm not going to pay for your sept. Pay for your own sept. That's fine. Right. I think we might be able to move either onto speed 5 or onto something new. Uh, we've got pris uh, prisoners to imprison. Why? Fornicator, fornicator, fornicator. Which? Fornicator, for fornicator. Adulterer, fornicator. Fornicator, fornicator, fornicator. I think we can probably leave him be. I think that's fine. All by the which were effectively just uh, variants on a theme. Um, we're not endorsed by our high septum. What can we do about this? Who is our high septum? It'll be this guy, Bo Boris. I mean, I suppose we could sway him. We could uh, imprison him. That, that Then it would work. What's recruit as a spy? Ooh. I don't know what this is. I mean, surely this is new, but still, I don't know what this is. He would not accept it. Why not? What's the negative? He doesn't like me. Okay, let's find somebody who likes me. Stannis? Okay, let's go with John. You want to be my spy? Okay, so you can't be a spy. Does it have to be somebody who isn't landed? Okay, you're landed. Let's just check you. So no spy. No spy. Which menu was it in? It was in personal. Okay, so yeah, no spy. So let's find somebody. Somebody who likes us. So actually, you know what? We'll, we'll just do this. That's very weird. Uh, we'll do this the easy way. Um, there we go. That's fine. So search, actually, we, what we want to do... Uh, this is not right. What I want to do is say, actually, um, ruler, not ruler. And sort by opinion of you. So our friend in Estamont. Can you be my spy? Okay. Mark is captive. To break all marriages and concubinages and add them to your court during a war to free captives. Okay. Um, mark is captive to break all marriages and concubine ships and add them to your court during a war to free captives. So would this... This effectively is saying that they are captive, we're saying that they're captive there, and then if we declared a war, we could then declare a war against our grandfather. I think that's what it's saying. Let's start with recruit a spy. Okay, she'll say yes.
She is a member of our spy network. Cool. Hey! Uh, Lord Paramount Quellen has come here. Wonderful. Well, it's good to see. He's giving me some money. Really appreciate it. Right, now you're my spy. Now what do you do? I can dismiss you as a spy. Okay. I don't know what we do with that. Build the June Road. If I was diligent, I could do this and build roads. Nice. Okay. Uh, I have absolutely no idea what we do with this. That's fine. Good to know. Uh, next one that I want to do, I'm going to do a save before we do it. Because I want to try out the other option to mark as captive. Hmm. Okay. So there are some new things going on. So we'll just save it there. Um, let's see what this does. Because I don't want it to break anything. Uh, probably easiest ways to go back this way, right? Yeah. So mark as captive. Okay. You know what I think this does? I think this is... If we mark them as a captive, then if we... Okay, I understand how it's phrased now. So if we mark them as a captive, if we were to declare a war to free captives, it would break the marriages and concubine ships at that point and add them to your court. Okay. Now, can we do that to anyone? Like, could I do that to her spouse? No. Okay. Uh, so does it have to be somebody who likes us enough? Let's go to this find characters list again. Um, find somebody who is not a ruler. So you. Yeah, I can recruit this guy as a... Uh, yeah, I can recruit him as a spy, but I cannot say that he's captive. So it's because... I don't know, you're, you're in our realm. Hmm. Interesting. Mary. Nope, can't do anything with Mary, but Mary's not married. Oh yeah, it probably has to be married. So this is... You. No, so I can recruit you as a spy, and recruit you as a spy. Huh. Okay. So there's definitely some new mechanics in here. I don't know what the conditions for this are, but it makes sense that she's our friend, maybe? Yeah, maybe it's because she's our friend, that's why we could do it. Um, maybe it has to be somebody who has, like, a relationship to you. Like, maybe a family member or a friend would count. Like, can I mark you as a ca captive? No. I can legitimize the bastard. That doesn't seem like a good idea. Um, yeah, see, I can't do anything there. I can offer my, um, yeah, I can offer my ward a knight's tutelage. Uh, offer Lord Marrick a knight, making someone in his court the squire of the chosen adult. Wait. Oh, is he land? No, okay. Oh, so this is actually applying to his... I don't really understand what's happening here. Let's say that I choose Pierce the Knight of the Pantry Peaceberry. Oh, then I could choose one of his other children. Okay, so it's actually applying to him, not to the person I right-clicked on. Okay, interesting. So we're learning new mechanics. Um, okay, that's fine. So we don't have a squire. That's what I'm say seeing here. Put a squire and a knight in your court. So I could have Patchface as my squire if I wanted to. I can't have this guy as my squire. Despite me having him as our ward. This doesn't seem to make any sense to me. Surely, surely we should be able to have him as our squire in case this is, unless this is like a double thing. Like, Ward is also a squire by default. Oh yeah, you're, you're already marked as a squire. Okay. Oh, because your knight is this person. So Malden Macy. Oh, okay. I see. Oh, okay. It's all interconnected. Anyway, I'm going to unpause the game and let it run. We'll just see what events fire. Lord Jarian of Black, uh, Blackberry has come to us with money. Court Grandeur is now at level 7. I thought we had already seen that pop up. You would like to bring me another 15 gold? Well, thank you very much. You would like to just come to court? Thank you very much. Considered opinion. My weaver, Dickon, uh, updates me on his progress, droning on about the limits of thread and loom as my mind reels with bold ideas for my tapestry. Weaving may not be my personal forte, but that doesn't mean I can't have a say in how my money is spent. Um, we could use our in our background, or we can just say like, no, he knows what he's doing. Let's use our background. Let's 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 uh, do some input into this one. Education is at an end. My ward Justin has come of age, and it is time he left my care with sufficient tutelage. Even a child that has displayed little natural inclination towards diplomatic influence, such as Justin, can come to truly understand it. So he became a charismatic negotiator and a trained fighter. Okay, so he's now off. Can I invite him to my court or something? I could recruit him as a spy. 
Just recruit everybody as a spy. Oh, I could invite him to our court, but he would say no because he's his latest child. Um, he'd probably say no to being a spy, I would imagine, right? Yeah, yeah. If we bribed him, he would say yes. I don't really know what a spy does. Maybe spies mean that they join your schemes automatically? I don't know. Anyway, that's fine. Right, we, we've now done that. You know what we should do? We should probably deal with all the people in our court that um, we need to deal with. So we're looking for all these children in our court. So children. And we have a couple of ones that we've taken as uh, prisoners, haven't we? I think these two we've taken as prisoners. So, um, I'm just thinking what we can do. So I was wondering, first of all, are they marked as a hostage or a captive? No. Okay. Uh, we could potentially educate them. Yeah. I mean, we probably don't want to educate this person. Why, why don't we have Cersei educate this person? We're not choosing off best. We're just choosing off of, like, somebody can do it. Cersei, I'm giving you Gwyneth Marston. Go educate her. Right. And we will educate the other one. So we're going to educate Luke Grafton when he comes of age. Although we could probably just set it up now. That'd be fine. Wonderful. Right. we do anything else with him? Like say, hey, were you going to make you a knight? No. I guess he has to come of age before we can make him a knight or whatever. Like maybe he has to be at least six or something. And then we have some random lowborn called Megan. I don't think we're going to worry about that. We have our bastard daughter. You know what would be really funny? Why don't we have her be educated by Cersei? That sounds like that'll be a laugh. And then we'll leave that there. Uh, anything else we can do? Uh, nothing immediately, no. Okay. Right. Let's. Uh, we, I mean, we could start building and things, but I don't think that's really in the scope of what we're aiming to do. Or more just aiming to try out new stuff. Like, obviously, we can be, what we could do is build up all of our holdings and try and make them better. Oh, you know what? I did see something. Uh, Lord, We also have Lord Robert uh, Lover coming here to give us uh, some homage. But I saw some really weird stuff here. Um, if we have a look at the Godswood, right? This They've decided on some really weird numbers. This is a new building as well. For, um, like, how many levies you get. So they've gone for 37 levies at rank 2. Which is extremely odd, right? And then at rank 3, it's 49 levies. And then at rank 4, it's 61 levies. Now, there must be a reason for this. I have no idea what this reason is, that they've chosen these exact numbers. But it's very interesting. Yeah, all the base game ones are all like multiples of um, 5, I think. Yeah. So they all look kind of nice and even. So it's just kind of odd that that one isn't. Uh, is there anything we can do here? Oh, well, back in here. What have we got? We've got the red keep. So this one gives us holding taxes, tyranny, renown. Okay, bunch of nice little bonuses. Then we have the seven gates of King's Landing. So all holdings in this duchy get levy size and holding taxes. Ooh, very nice. Uh, any new buildings apart from that? We've got apiaries. I don't know if they're new, but I haven't definitely haven't seen them. You know, the easier way to tell if they're new is to see whether uh, there's any like crazy numbers. I don't know. Maybe these are new? Not sure. Uh, I, I haven't seen them in the base game, uh, so that's fine. But yeah, apart from that, it doesn't look like there's anything too crazy going on there. Anything new in the temples? I guess we can't check because we need to have a temple that had an open holding. Cities? Yeah, apiaries are there as well. Uh, have we got any like, temples over here that aren't like completely finished? You are a godless place with no with no temples. There we go. Uh, yeah, we got the same beekeepers thing here. The fact that it's on this one as well definitely makes me think it might be a mod thing. Anyway, that was just an interesting thing. We got anything in Dragonstone? Ah, we have Dragonstone, uh, which gives you control growth, monthly renown. Ooh, okay, that's kind of interesting. Um, I think renown's quite a cool one because a I think is this one traditionally is given to the heir. Of, like, the um, Iron Throne, or Heir of the Seven Kingdoms, I guess you should say. So, the fact it gives monthly renown is interesting, because it's still going to give you a benefit by giving it away. That's kind of nice, because um, they'll generate renown by themselves. Okay, cool. Anything else in these ones that we've got here? Jousting Grounds, I think all of this is there. 
yeah, I think that all of this is kind of normal stuff. Okay, cool. Right, back to unpausing, letting Ty move on. Uh, okay, Tywin would like to talk about the Westerlands. That is not good. He would like me to pay for a sept. Hmm. I'm going to say the pious generally sponsor churches themselves. We're making friends and influencing people. Oh, our counselor is dead. Lord Paramount Quellen of the Iron Isles has died. Okay. Uh, you would like to talk to me about Gullet Isle. Give me a second. Who's in charge of the Iron Islands now then? The Iron Islands is now uh, being run by Roderick. What's the succession law? Primogenitor. No, that that's not right. That, that doesn't seem like that's primogenitor. Uh, let me go back to Quellen. If it was primogenitor, surely it goes to Lord Urin Crozai. Why did it go to this person? Is it one of your children, maybe? Ah, okay, so it's gone down Balin. Oh, Balin's dead. He was slain by Prince Oberyn the Red Viper. I see. So then it bypasses him and then goes to Roderick. Okay, now it's Asha and Theon there. Okay, so Balin's like already dead, so that's okay, so that's why it's a little bit messed up. Okay, I understand. Cool. Um does it not usually ha I think in the CK2 version, it has like a different succession law to do with um like the way like them getting kind of like similar to elective law. I don't know. Anyway, you want to talk about um, Gullet Isle? Sure. Council appointment. Thank you for seeing me, my liege. I come to you today with an urgent request. Please, my lord, let me sit on your council. My talents are overlooked while lesser men are heard at the highest levels. I would share the burdens of the realm as your marshal. You think so you can do a better job than Stannis? Wow. Okay. Uh, no. Um, there are other considerations at play, like Stannis has it currently? Yeah. Stannis is keeping it. Anyway, who's going to move up to be our Castellan? So we could put in Mace of the Reach. I don't think that's sensible. Maybe we upgrade uh, John Aaron. Yeah, I think I think we upgrade John Aaron. Welcome to being Hand of the King, and he seems like he would be a much better diplomacy hand. What can he do? He can give us 0 0.68 renown per month. That's an incredible amount looking at how much we gain by default. Wow. He also makes our counselors like us. Or we can just take the 6 diplomacy he gives us. 6 diplomacy gives us a lot of general opinion. I kind of like him making the counselors like us. Yeah, that seems like it's a very sensible plan. He's just holding the realm together. So now we need a, a chancellor. Um, I think Hoster uh, Tully makes a lot more sense than um, Mace. He's better at the job. He may not be a powerful vassal, but, you know, he's better at the job. Yeah, I think he, think he can have it. He also supported us in the war. Yeah, makes a lot of sense to me. Okay, cool. Uh, what we got going on here? We can imprison more criminals. Fornicators. Yeah, okay. They're all fornicators. We don't need to worry about it. Inspiration realized. You have made me the world's worst tapestry. It was one dynasty opinion and one court grandeur. The cloth depicts the turning point of the famous battle of Yamstick, won by King Robert against Lord Paramount Mace. Uh, excuse me? When did you get a hook on me? This guy just became my master of whispers. How did that happen? Does anyone else have a hook on me? Oh, right, you can see your spies in this list. That's new. I still don't know what a spy does, but that's okay. Um. Oh, maybe this guy has... Maybe he doesn't have a hook. Maybe he's got, he's got guaranteed council rights. Ah. Yeah. Okay, well, that's annoying. Yeah, it's the kind of thing we should have known about. Okay, wonder if anybody else has guaranteed council rights. Well, that's definitely not going to make Dorne too happy. Yeah, they're going to be very uh, unhappy with that decision. Oh well, not an awful lot we can do about it. And the nice thing about him being on our council is that now he gets the uh, Councillor 34 opinion boost, so he doesn't hate us, which is also very nice. Right, carrying on. 
Who have we got? We've got John Lon Bar Emmon. What a name. Lord Perkin would like to speak to us. Would like me to pay for your church? No. Okay, I'm going to say it already. I think we could do with one or two more events on that one if it's going to pop up that often. Right, at the back, we'll put up my lovely new tapestry. Uh, exactly where it deserves to be, hidden behind the throne so you can't actually see it. There we go. Right, carrying on. Walton. Walton? Walton Chelsid. Okay, thank you for coming in here. How's our renown looking? Renown is... Oh, it dropped below 7 again. Look at that. Yeah, it dropped down. But it should be ticking upwards, so I don't know what keeps dropping it down. Maybe I keep taking events that drop it down. You know what, that seems like a very likely uh, thing. Oh, you know what? Probably, um, yeah, one one of the events that we had that popped up the Lord of Renown also Lord of Court Grandeur, and I just skimmed over it. That seems like a likely thing. The sweat of his brow. Your King's Guard, Jonathan Darry, is taken to spending all their time in the yards and stables of the keep. Um, though where others merely practice swordplay or horsemanship, Jonathan seems to spend every minute ser in search of increasingly strenuous and difficult physical work. The difference is clear to see in his form, as his frame has grown sh uh, sinewy, dense and solid, much to the appeal of the gawking boys of the court who can reliably be found in the yard uh, when Jonathan is at work. He is now strong and brawny for five years. So he's got extra prowess for five years and injury resistance and then strong permanently. Well, it's on him. Okay. Carrying on. Uh, Lord Simmons has come to our court. Simmons Staunton. Okay. Court Grandeur is now at level six. Not ideal. Ah, the Vale. You would like to come in here. Urban Development. Thank you for seeing me, my liege. I've come to you today with an urgent request. The High Lordship of High Road has great potential but lacks needed infrastructure. My lord, sponsoring a new town in Rivers High Road would benefit the entire realm by the implications of trade alone. Well, I mean, this guy is like, you know, our tutor, Hand of the King, a vassal, a friend. Yeah, I think we could do that. Uh, nothing will be refunded if, can't, if construction is... Um, Manually cancelled. Okay, so let's just make a city here. Uh, very well, but you owe me in turn or lands are your responsibility. I will pay money. We'll support your endeavor, and that raised our court grandeur. Nice. My vassal, Lord Gunther Sundlass, has had an affair with Dorcas. Okay. Cool. Uh, uh, excuse me. You have now pushed your way onto my court. This was unexpected. How did you... Okay, well, I mean, he probably had to... Uh, you know. He probably has it in his vassal contract. Yeah, okay. Well, that's annoying. Again. Uh, well, wel welcome to the uh, council. Why do I feel very similar to um, Robert in this situation where I'm like, Oh, all these people are on my council who I don't really like. Okay. And aren't really that powerful. They just ha happen to be good at playing politics. Also just notice we can do this. And have a look at our king's guard. We can assign bodyguards. Okay. Or we can have them be assigned protection. What does bodyguard do? Uh, so there would be a bodyguard in our court. Oh, I see. Yeah, so... Luen Martel, you can be bodyguard for Kasana. Or you can protect me. Creates a bodyguard duties activity. Okay, well I'm going to send you to Princess Kasana. Sure. Okay. Um, That seems fine. And you know what? Pierce? Pierce, your, your job is to protect... Um, yeah, your job's to protect me. And then, uh, I don't know. Let, let's have uh, Jamie Lannister. It's going to be your job to protect our bastard. There we go. I'm sure that will go down well. There'll be no problems with that whatsoever. Also, just seeing like, whether we get anything that pops up here. No. Okay. It's fine. Foster the Troublemaker. Found this little monster among my things. What wasn't scratched to bits was covered in piss. 
It is a cat. I don't know if you've realized this. That's kind of what they do. We have Mathos gone here. He's given me some money. My court grandeur is now at level 8. Wonderful. So we're now going in the right direction here at last. Look at that. We no longer take a vassal penalty. Great. Getting ahead. A flock of robed men burst into my throne room, hectically uh, searching the floor and uprooting everything from chairs to skirts in frantic, in frantic search. King Robert, we are the followers of Haldan the Headless, a great holy man who has been depicted as part of a prophecy the seven who are one gave him at birth. As often happens with holy figures, his head started rolling away. We have been chasing it through the land and are certain it rolled up the hill, uh, in, it rolled up the hillock into your castle. Um, I will not allow a cult to rummage through my court. Okay, court grandeur went up to level 9. They were intimidated. They have left. And now we're taking, like, only a prestige penalty here. Wonderful. So we kind of fixed our issues. A lot of people like us now. We have some, a wild council. And I think it is time for us to end the episode there. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.